guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is by Cackleberry Games, and it's called Gardens of Babylon. Gardens of Babylon is for two to four players with a single player uh, variant in the game. It takes about 60 minutes to play and it's for ages 10 and up. In the game Gardens of Babylon, you're going to be basically building the Gardens of Babylon. Players are going to take turns drafting uh, tiles and placing them down on the board, utilizing their gardeners to move up and around the board, dodging other players' pieces and trying to place down their little flower pieces, which they will then trickle down the streams of the gardens and try and remove other players little pieces if you can score the most points at the end of the game while building the gardens you're going to win and if you are unable to you're going to lose in a single player variant you're going to be playing against the king and there's a couple different variants to the rules which i'll probably explain during the review but for the most part that's the idea of the game anyway let's go down below and i'll show you all the components of the game and then i'll come up and tell you how to play so here we have the game gardens of babylon and everything that's going to be included in the game and as you can see there's quite a bit of different things the first thing you're going to notice is probably these things and these things here. You're going to have the uh, starting tiles here for a longer game. You put them all down and it'll tell you how to do that down here. And for a shorter game, you're gonna take one of these away and uh, make it a little smaller of a pyramid. You're also gonna have these uh, scoring tiles here and there's 12 of them and you're gonna place them as the uh, pyramid gets larger. And this is basically the scoring track. It goes from zero all the way up to really high scoring counts. These over here are going to be the pyramid tiles and there's 78 of them and they all look different and they all act different on the game. There's four of them down there are going to start as a res resource pool in which you can go ahead and take them while drafting and place them down below on the board as you're building the Gardens of Babylon. There are four different player colors and there are two different types of uh, these things you're going to be utilizing which are A, the workers, and then B, you're going to be using daffodil seeds or lily seeds or petunias or uh, carnation seeds depending on the color, but basically they're all just flowers and you'll be utilizing them to uh, place on the board and they will slowly fall down as such like waterfalls uh, to try and acquire more points in the game. It'll also come with the full rule book as well as the game box uh, which has got full art on the front and on the back side of it. It's pretty much what you're going to get in the game. All right let's come up and I'll explain how a turn works and then I will uh, go ahead and show you down below a couple turns before we talk about the solo player variant. So beginning of the game is fairly simple. You're going to choose a color. You're going to get those flowers and those workers of that color and you're going to set up the game for either a short or a a long game depending on the number of players is also going to determine how many workers and uh uh, how many workers and or flowers you're going to start the game with. Not only that, but uh, after everybody has done that and your board is all set up with the, of course, the side, which is going to include the, whatever these called, uh, the, the scoring markers that'll go up along the pyramid, then you're going to take four actions and end your turn. Everybody's going to do that in turn order for each round. The first thing you're going to do is place a tile. There's a tile pool of four of these different tiles. So you're going to choose one of them, place it down on the board, provided that you follow the uh, rules of placement and then after that you can choose to move now you can move a worker that is on the board and if you don't have one or you want to place one you can take one from your hand and place it on the bottom of the board anywhere you'd like and after you've done that um, you're gonna be able to either a place or be move and be moving is simply gonna take three movements for one worker and there are certain movement restrictions based on how the tiles are played and also whether or not you walk into an empty tile if you walk into an empty tile you have to stop your movement or if you walk into a tile with one of your own workers you can actually regain all of your movement so you can actually move farther than three spaces or less than three spaces depending on how you place your workers and uh, how they're kind of situated around the board but basically they're all going to be trying to get up to the top there so you'll have different areas to place after that you're going to choose to plant if you can. Planting is only going to be available if you have nothing on a tile. So if the tile is blank like this and you put a worker on there, you could then choose to optionally plant and that plant will then cascade down the waterfalls, disrupting any other players' plants that are on the next tiles down below until the waterfalls stop, in which case you're going to then secure those spaces until somebody tries to mess you over and hopefully they can't. And um, if there's already somebody that has a lily or a flower down on the space you've walked into, you're not going to be able to plant because there's already one there. Only cascading removes them. 
The final thing you do is you're going to draw a tile from the tile deck and then place it face up in the tile pool so that the next player will also have the same number of, plant, of, of these different uh, garden tiles to choose from to place on the board for their next turn. And you're going to rinse and repeat playing that up until the point where the game is going to end. The game's going to end depending on the number of players. Once there is uh, less tiles than the number of players, that is when the game's going to end with that last final player. You're going to tally up the points based on the tiles uh, and where your flowers are and indicative of the uh, rules as to how many points you're going to score based on where the tiles are located, which I'll show you down below as well. Player with the most points at the end of the game is going to be the winner, and that's basically how you play. Let's show you down below a little bit of a walkthrough of how you can take your turn, and then we'll come up and I'll talk about it. So here we are with Gardens of Babylon, and I went ahead and set it up for two players. In a two-player game, I also wanted to make it shorter so you guys could see more of it quicker, and so every player is going to start with six workers as opposed to the normal 12, but they get their little uh, flowers, of course, and all the rest of the players are going to be set aside, uh, as well as in a shorter player game, you're going to take away one of these tiles here, as well as some of these scoring areas, because you're not going to be utilizing all of the large pyramid that it, it could be if you want to play a longer game. Set aside all of these little tiles here for the gardens, and of course put four out in the pool. And now the first player is going to go ahead and start the game off by uh, being red, and he'll go ahead and place one of these four tiles down the board. Placement simple, you can place anywhere where there's a little uh, enclave here, so for instance you can place here or here, any of the nine areas here, but you cannot place over here, so it's always going to be coming upward. If there were two tiles here, placements to place above here would have to be right here, so it has to have that little enclave. So that is the rule for placement, and that works all the way up. The farther along you place, the more flowers you have in the top areas, you're going to score more points. This row is worth one, two, three, four, five, you see going on. When you look at the tiles, there's different indicators as to how they function. First of all, you'll see stairs. Stairs will let you know that you can actually move your workers from one area to another, so placing that there. Having a worker down here, you could simply go ahead and move it up the stairs. That would be a movement. If, however, you placed over here and there were no stairs, you'd actually have to move from one side to another in order to then be able to get up the stairs. But in order to move from one side to another, you're going to actually have to have these little doors here. Doors will allow you to move side to side, stairs going up. Uh, another thing you're going to need to take a look at on the tiles are going to be the waterfalls. There's two different types of waterfalls. There's flowing uh, downward from the bot from the middle to the bottom, and then there's flowing downward from the top to the middle. These are going to indicate uh, how the chain reactions can occur while you're placing tiles. So if you have something like this, for instance, and you went ahead and placed a flower up here because you had a worker, that flower could then chain reaction and place another one down, and so on and so forth. If, however, there were uh, no... Uh, waterfalls going down. This would not chain reaction here because obviously you can see that the waterfalls do not match here. Uh, so that's important to note. The last thing is there are tiles that have bonuses on them, and these bonuses will score additional points if you have a seed on them. So for instance, if you place this here and this was in this row, you would score three for the tile plus two more bonus points. So just as, as a little uh, added bonus there, you can score those things. So okay, let's go ahead and now start now that you've got the basic ideas of placement and what the tiles do. First player is just going to go ahead and select something like this one here, and he'll place it over here. And after he's gone ahead and placed from the pool here, his next thing is he can move, or he can place and move. If he doesn't have a worker down, that is probably the best thing to do. He can place just like that. And then he has to move this worker up to three spaces or until he reaches a tile that has nothing on it, in which case that would be a reaching tile that has nothing on it. And then he can go ahead and move, take his next action, which is plant. And then after you plant, you see if there's any chain reactions, if they go downhill and hit any other, uh, any other seeds or any other empty locations. And then finally, you're going to go ahead and draw a tile and place it down for the next player. Ooh, this one has a bonus of a four. That's a pretty useful one. So perhaps the next player will go ahead and place this down, select another worker, and uh, place it here. Now, what's interesting about this one here is that there's actually no stairs, so he actually can't go up. So maybe he'll wait till his next turn to be able to... Uh, to plant something, but he could if he wanted to. He could go ahead and choose to move there at least. Uh, he can't plant because he's not able to plant there. There's nothing, he has to be planting on one of these empty little areas. He have to be up here and plant there, in which case here there's nothing, so oh well, poor him. Now place another one down, and then the red player is good to go again. The red player can go ahead and choose any of these tiles he wants. Perhaps he'll choose, oh, I don't know, we'll go ahead and choose this one right here. And uh, then he can go ahead and either move this worker if he wanted to, so he can move this one down one, 
Um, unfortunately, he can't get up there because there's no stairs and there's nothing here that's going to connect that. So if he wanted to, he could take another worker and place it down here. No, that's not going to work either. He's not going to be able to place anything. So maybe he'll just go ahead and place a worker down instead. He's not going to be able to get to up here, just like this poor guy wasn't able to as well. Uh, and then, okay, the next thing is going to go ahead and drop down. The next player is going to get a chance to go. Now, he wants to get up here if possible at some point. Uh, but until he can do that, perhaps he'll just go ahead and place this here. He's then going to go ahead and move. He'll then go ahead and get to place, see if it trickles down, which of course it's not the beginning of the game. And uh, then he's going to go ahead and flip over one of these tiles here once again for the red player to have a chance. Now, what does the red player want to do now? He needs to try and get over here. So he can go ahead and put this one down if he wants. And of course, he's followed the, the movement placing rule fine. He can then go ahead and choose to place a worker down to move that, or he can use an existing worker, in which case he'd go ahead and move just like that because now he's got a little uh, little courtyard there. And then he'd go ahead and place a little token there. Now, that's useful, but what's even better is um, if he was able to get up here in some way, he could then take both of these spots. But he's not right now currently because there's no stairs. See how it's working? So then he'd go ahead and place here, pulling another one, and continuing the game. Now, um, another, another interesting rule as far as the uh, play, as far as movement goes, we'll go ahead and fill in some of the, some of the board here. Let's see if I can do this right just so you guys will get a better idea of how it looks. So we'll, we'll, we'll move into the future a little bit. When you're placing, or when you're moving units, for instance, let's say I have, oh, this poor guy is, is backwards. I think it's looking like this. There we go. Uh, when, you, when you're moving units along, if you come across a unit of your own, so in this instance, if, the, he's wanted, if he wanted to move this guy, so he placed this tile, he wanted to move this guy, he could uh, move it three spaces, provided that it never hit an empty tile, which is, of course, when you have little seeds here, they're, they're not empty, or if there's units there. And whenever you cross one of your own units, you are actually going to get to uh, re-solidify your movement. So in this case, he'd go one, and then right there he'd go get all of three movements back, and then he'd move again, but he hit an empty tile, so he didn't have to go ahead and place. So I, I think you're getting the idea of how it works. Man, I think I'm putting these putting these wrong. It's hard to see going backwards. But I, I think you get the idea, even though I cannot seem to manage to place these right. Okay, it is like this. <laughs> that's that's what I get for re doing this all backwards. But the game's going to continue as you continue to increase the board, and as you see, it keeps getting bigger and bigger. You're already placing down the uh, your little your little guys here, your little. Um, your, your, your little plants, and when that happens, you're going to trickle to see if they explode and destroy the other player's flowers and score bonus points. So uh, let's talk about scoring now, as I think you get the idea of how a turn works. Uh, this row is worth one point, and of course, for each of these little bonuses, if you have these areas, you're going to score additional bonus points. And uh, two and three and four, as you continue to go up, and the game's going to end in a two-player game where there's only one tile that has not been placed. And whoever has the most is the winner. Uh, you can also utilize your little meeple um, and place it at the starting of zero and this is your point tracker so at the end of the game red had like 95 points and yellow had 119 that's kind of what it would look like and uh, that's the basic idea of the game of gardens of babylon a pretty simple uh game probably just a little difficult to play upside down but easy to play otherwise all right let's come up and talk about it and i'll tell you what i think all right so a couple caveats for gardens of babylon firstly my time warp was Hopefully not too confusing. I, I know it's, it, it's, it's difficult for me to try and do this backwards, which is probably uh, why it might have been, but you get the idea. You're going to be placing and moving your characters around, you're going to be planting, and then you're going to watch them trickle down the streams and hopefully destroy your opponent's flowers. And then after that, you're going to go ahead and replace one of these tiles down, and the game will continue until there's only uh, less tiles than there are a number of players, in which case you can't have all your points and whoever is the highest is the winner. Uh, these tiles are interesting now. Like I said, playing backwards is kind of difficult, Playing forwards is fine because at the bottom of every tile is going to either be a plant or it is going to be something like this, which is going to have a uh, doorway, which can let you move back and forth. So that's how you know it's the bottom. And the top is always going to have this uh, diamond looking shape of a uh, place where you can have place your, your characters, and in which case you can drop down your flowers. Uh, so that, that, that will probably help you with placement. Although I don't think you'll need it when you're playing right setup, but just in case. Uh, scoring is also important. Note that you're going to want to score the higher up places because they're going to be worth more points. And the final thing is you get a certain amount of flowers and when you run out of those flowers, you're SOL unless somebody destroys your flowers that, yeah, from a waterfall effect, in which case you'll get them back and then be able to place them. 
Another thing to note is your characters start on the bottom and they move up, so you're going to have to cons constantly keep moving your workers up. You're going to need to do little uh, bonus movements as much as you can to move your workers from one space to another because when you move three spaces, as long as they are not uh, empty, you can keep going provided that you keep hitting your own workers because it'll give you a refresh on your movement, which is super cool, right? Uh, that's pretty much all the little comments I have to say about the game. Now, let's talk about the game itself. First of all, Gardens of Babylon is beautiful. I love the stylized artwork on the game box. It has some really beautiful artwork on this uh, box here. Front and back it shows you what the game is going to look like. It shows you the uh, the full style uh, stylized version of the game. And then, of course, when you finish the game, just like I guess Expansity, uh, what looks what what is done, the finished product looks beautiful, regardless of if you win or not. Uh, there is a competitive nature to this game, but it is not a take that in nature. It, it, it's not basically take that in nature. You're simply trying to collect the best spots as possible, and you're going to try and see what is ahead and what is already in place, how you can best move your units, where you think your opponents are going to move. Everybody has their set movement area until the forces collide, in which case flowers are going to be flying off left and right, which is a good thing because realistically running out of flowers and them all being at the bottom is not super good for you because points are going to be accumulated higher, higher, and higher, more and more value as the scoring goes up. Playing that longer game is fun. Playing the short game works just as well. I enjoyed it for all number of players. When I mean all number, I even mean solo. Generally, I'm not a solo gamer, and I usually don't even bother playing the solo modes or solo variants of games, but after playing this multiplayer, I want to try it solo player just to see how it would feel, and this feels like a great solitaire game. You're playing against the king, and the rule variant is basically you're playing from left to right, moving up the board. The king will just do a random placement and then drop flowers, and it'll just trinkle down. And if you get more points than the king, you win, and you're just trying to best your score every time you play. It's a lot of fun. It was really enjoyable. I was very, very shocked as to how much I enjoyed the single player, of the player variant of the game, considering I'm a multiplayer type of a gamer. Uh, overall, though, it's a very fun game. I really enjoyed it. It can be quick, and it can be longer if you'd like. I prefer this kind of a game to be a little quicker in nature because of it's basically, it feels like Carcassonne as far as placing down tiles. You know, probably two hour game is probably too long. Um, so 60 minutes is probably right on the nose for this one. If you're just learning the game, it'll take probably an hour and a half to play a full on four player full game. But if you wanted to play a quicker two player game, probably take about 45 minutes roughly. Overall, beautiful, love the artwork, love the style of the design. Uh, I think that the components are gonna be even nicer if this is the prototype. I'm excited to see what it looks like when it's fully finished. I definitely, definitely recommend this game if you like tiles placement games if you like a little bit of competitive action if you like a solar player variant and you have a big table space because this game you need a large table space to play this game for the full version of it you can see my pictures on instagram or on facebook to see how large the actual board can be just showing you this game on the smaller scale is actually pretty large and it can look overwhelming it can feel like it's overwhelming and the fact that there's so many different ways you can move your characters, how you want to place, and where you want to place, and what's going to be the best scoring. But you get better as time goes on. The more and more you play, you start to realize what is the best type of uh, tiles that you want to place down. Obviously, ones that have a full stream are going to be even better, but at what cost? Because somebody else can take it from you. Maybe you want to actually stop somebody from being able to uh, trickle down and steal all your stuff, so placing something like this could be very, very useful uh, because they can't actually hit that spot. It's safe forever for you, and utilizing them at the top is going to be important. Um, so that's pretty much what I have to say about it. Uh, as far as negatives go, like I said, table space can be an issue, or Maybe if you don't like competitive games, even in this type of a style, if you don't like Carcassonne style competitive games, you're not gonna like this one either. If you uh, don't like the theme of the game, because it does come up very well as you're just dropping pedals down and you're just trying to secure as much space as possible, it's basically area control, then maybe not this one for you. But if everything else sounds interesting to you, the game works, the game flows, it's beautiful, brilliant. I really, really enjoy it. I suggest you take a look at it. This game is going to get my seal of approval. Gardens of Babylon. Great game. Definitely check that out down below in the description on Kickstarter. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. If you want, even click that little notification bell. All that stuff really helps us, and we do greatly appreciate it. It keeps us going with more and more videos. Uh, and also, do check out Gardens of Babylon. It's, it's, it's really, really cool little tile placement game. I think you'll like it. 
Don't forget to also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We have tons of giveaways going on right now. I think we've got the game Vindication, the game Insured, and the game All Your Base. Uh, most of them are all already on Kickstarter right now, so picking up a free copy is a pretty good deal, and also supporting those creators by sharing out those videos. Also, go ahead and check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, and the Giveaway Geek. They got some great stuff there, lots of giveaways as well. If you like a bunch of great content and a bunch of free stuff, they're great sites to check out. That's all I got for you this time, guys. And as always, I will enjoy building the gardens of Babylon with you next time. <laughs>